So now we move on to the yeah next topic. We will go a little bit more deep into the relaxation phenomena. How do the relaxation phenomena occur? And qualitatively and intuitively, how do we interpret this? How do we understand this? Relaxation. To understand this phenomenon somewhat more critically, qualitatively though, not so much, uh, some little bit of quantitation also we will do. So, what did we say? How does the relaxation occur? The relaxation occurs because of somebody causing a transition. The spins which are shifted to the higher state have to come, come down. The magnetization has to return to equilibrium. And therefore there will be transitions up and down. So who causes the relaxation? We said the lattice causes the relaxation when we are talking about spin lattice relaxation. Therefore, in our drawn equations we had this T1 as an entity which characterizes the relaxation of the longitudinal magnetization Mz minus M0 divided by T1. So that is related to the population change. Bloch had introduced this another relaxation which is called as T2 and this was for transverse magnetization that characterized the relaxation of in the transverse plane. What does it mean? Relaxation in the transverse plane meaning? It actually implies there is a decay of phase coherence among the spins. Therefore, T1 represents population changes and T2 represents decay of phase coherence. That's right here. T1 represents population changes and T2 represents decay of phase coherence. among the spins. <coughs> so, spin lattice relaxation, population changes have to, means there should be transitions happening from upper state to the lower state. And this we say is induced by the lattice. That there are fluctuations in the lattice which cause magnetic field changes. They change the lifetime of the upper state and therefore there are relaxations happening. We will talk about that. And what causes decay of the phase coherence? If the spins are all here together, there is a phase coherence. If they are all moving together, then there is a phase coherence. They are moving together. But if they start becoming like this, then there is a phase coherence decay. And why does this happen? This happens because of fluctuations in the frequency. The frequency changes. And this changes randomly. Okay? Sometimes it has this frequency, therefore in a time it has moved this way. The other fellow has seen a different frequency, it has moved this way. The third fellow has moved here. So therefore, because of the fluctuations in the frequency, this phase coherence is going. Frequency of? Frequency of precession. Precision. precision. Transverse magnetization is rotating in the transverse plane. Right? Each, each of the individual components is rotating in the transverse plane. Okay. So therefore, let us let us see how these things happen. Why does the frequency change? Okay? And what cause, how do the transitions occur between the upper and the lower space? And we said all this comes because of fluctuations in the unit system. Let us. The mechanisms are the same in both cases. Either case there are fluctuations, one causes a change in the frequency distribution, other causes the change in the lifetimes and therefore the population changes will happen. Okay, now let us look at what happens in your solution. Fluctuating <coughs> magnetic fields.
Suppose you have a, a dipole here. This is a magnetic moment mu1 and you have another magnetic dipole magnetic moment mu2. Okay. So this fellow will create a field here. It has flux lines around it. So this will all go all over. So the distance between them is R. And if both are let us say uh, protons, they can be different ones also. But if they are both protons, then I will say mu and mu. Both are mu and mu. But they can be mu and mu. So in this situation, the magnetic field created by this at the side of this is 2 mu by r to the power q. Field created by one dipole and another dipole at a distance of r is 2 mu by r q. And this is, well, it will be dependent on, on the, of course, the orientation, whether it is on the axis or it is orthogonal to the axis, doesn't matter. But of this order of magnitude. Okay. Mu means mu 2. Mu 1. Mm -hmm. 2 mu mm -hmm. created by within the range at a distance. Fluctuating uh, uh, magnetic dipole, the magnetic moment mu, the field created by this, this is the field created by mu at a distance r. Okay. And this interaction with this, of course, will be mu 1 dot mu 2. Mu 1 dot mu 2. This is the field created. You can put it as, if you want, you can create mu1. Uh, mu1 creates a field here, or if you want to put mu2, the field created by this at the side of that. But the interaction is with mu1, not mu2. But this is the field created. Okay? And how much is this field? You can make a rough calculation for proton, for example. And you take a distance of 1 angstrom.
So I, I brought here the amplitude of the field 2 mu by R2. This field I plot as a function of time. Okay. Now this is a random motion, therefore the field also will be fluctuating randomly. So I Random, random fluctuation. So what is on the field? Field, field. Field created by one dipole at a distance of r. Field due to the magnetic momentum mu at a distance of r. So this you're talking about P1 or P2? No, no, I'm just talking about the field fluctuation. Okay. Field fluctuation, what are, what are the consequences? Okay. okay. And I will cross the pictures which will tell you, explain what all is going to happen. So the fluctuations will be on all the three directions? Yes, yes. So yeah. So we, so fluctuations will happen. So therefore, that's why it's random. Okay. The field fluctuation is happening. So the magnitude of the field in any point if you want to measure, mm -hmm. at any point, this one, keep this, your observation point here, and this due to the one which is the other dipole here. You are fixed here and this fellow is moving with respect to this. Now this is going all over. And what is the field created by this at this point? That's what we are talking. This whole thing moves as the magnetic 
moment is processing, this whole thing moves. Along with its flux lines, when the magnetic moment processes, it moves along with its flux lines, right? Okay. Now, and there is also tumbling. If you have a magnetic vector, if you have a proton which is sticking in your molecule, which if the if the molecule tumbles, if its orientation becomes down like this, will the magnetic moment comes down? It does not. Magnetic moment vector is always with respect to the B0 field. So it will, the magnetic moment always orients with respect to the with respect to the B0 field. It is here or there, no matter what the orientation of the magnetic of your molecule is. Okay. So therefore, when this is processing here, now what do I do? I plot the field created by this and this. What is the component? This is the fluctuating field. So I plot here. The field H, it has a component which is Hz and a component which is Hx. Uh, Hx and H1. Fluctuating field can be in any direction, but this precessional motion which happens due to the due to the spin what we have, it has a component which is always around the z axis. This rotation creates in the transverse plane fluctuating speed. Hx and the Hy components will move in the z axis uh, in, the, in the transverse plane. Okay. So no matter what your orientation of the uh, spin in your molecule is, that is the but the spin orientation will always be parallel or anti-parallel to the magnetic field. Now, not necessarily parallel and anti-parallel, depend upon what is the I value. I value, when we talk about spin half, it is like this, but if it is spin one, here, here, and here. So depending upon that value, there are multiple orientations of the magnetic nuclear spins, and they will all be processing under this direction. And the Z component, the Z component does not depend upon time. Well, it does depend upon time in a different sense. That the magnitude can be different if the fellow moves away. The spin moves away from the side of this uh, spin. It will have a different Z component here. And always the X and Y components will keep changing because of the motion, because of the precession. Okay? And the X and Y components moving, they will contribute to what? They will contribute to the relaxation. They will contribute to the relaxation. All of them will cause frequency, you know, here. There is a frequency here, it's like a B1 field. Each of these components, Hx and the Hy, it is a B1 field or the H1 field. And this is moving here. So it has a frequency and that is the one which is contributing to a P1 relaxation. The fluctuating thing on the z-axis, because of the distance variation. Okay, if this distance, as I said there, the distance R changes between two springs, the Z component changes its value because of the change in the R value. So therefore, there will be fluctuations in the Z component as well as in the transverse component. All the components will be changing with the time. What happens in the Z component will contribute to the spin, spin relaxation because it changes the energy values. It changes the energy values, therefore there is a fluctuation in the energy Therefore, the frequency values will change and that causes a decay of the phase coherence. And what happens in the transverse plane? Transverse plane has frequency components. These are like the B1 fields or the H1 field. We are using the H1 nomenclature all the time. The H1 fields which are present in the transverse plane, they cause transitions between the two spins, between the two levels or multiple levels and that causes the spin like this relaxation. Is that clear? So, both T1 and T2 phenomena arise because of fluctuating magnetic fields. Fluctuating magnetic fields in your space system which happens because of the Brownian motion. Sir? Yeah? Things are not clear. Uh -huh. when, uh, when the two spins are nearby, uh -huh. due to fluctuation, the, there is 
some fluctuation in the energy of this particular spin. Uh -huh. So resonance transition energy fluctuates. But the water, whatever is its resonance energy, it fluctuates due uh -huh. to which the lifetime changes. Uh -huh. It causes the changes. Lifetime changes causes the line width. Okay, it causes the line width. Transition happens because of your B1 field. We talk about the uh, line width, right? Line width has to do with the T2. Line width has to do with the T2. You remember that. So this one, if you calculate, this width is has to do with the T2. T2 phenomena. And the transition itself will happen because of the RF frequency. You need an RF frequency to cause the transition. And that causes the spring lattice T1 relaxation. How does you, you you we saw that when you have the a stimulated transition, the H1 field applied, we this we derive the equations for the relaxation. Correct? We derive the how the stimulated uh, transitions happen and how does it cause uh, T1, T2, T1 relaxation. We need somebody to cause a transition from upper level to the ground level and vice versa. And where does it come from? There has to be a field. There has to be B1 field. I keep on saying B1 and H1. H1 field. Okay. So the H1 field is what we are using. So there has to be an H1 field to cause the transition. And that also must be rotating. There must be a rotating field which will cause the transition. And that where does the rotating field come from? The rotating field comes, comes because of this transverse components of the field which is created by one nucleus at the center of the earth. The net field, if the net field is oriented in this manner, it has a component on the z-axis and it has components on the hx and the in the transverse plane. The net field created by the nucleus, one nucleus, because these are flux lines, right? The flux lines they will keep uh, they will keep moving. They are processing each of the each of the spin is processing around the z-axis and therefore it has a components here which are moving in the transverse plane. Okay, the flux lines are moving in the transverse plane. We remember we have, these are the fields here. These are the fields. Magnetic moment is oriented in this way. What you have drawn is the field. That's why I drew these flux lines. The flux lines therefore have fluctuations in the transverse plane and also in the Along the z axis, the components along the z axis, that's what I have drawn here. So, what changes the z component? Changes in the z component will cause fluctuations in these energies, therefore, it causes fluctuations in the frequencies. If there is a fluctuation in the frequency, it is causing a dephasing because the frequency changes. The frequency of precession will change for each of the spins. And that causes the phase tolerance decay. Is that clear? You get this clear. Unless this is clear, I am not going to go forward. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, when talking about P1. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, earlier in, uh, in previous classes, you said one thing like when we are applying B0 or A0, ah. then uh, the difference between alpha and beta states is created. Is? A population difference is created between alpha and beta. Yes, yes, yes. So that is created by this fluctuating magnetic field. No, no, no. It has created by the B0 field. The B0 main B0 field, so the DC field, mm -hmm. this is a fixed field. Mm -hmm. That creates, that lifts the degeneracy and you create it the two. That field is also present here. Mm -hmm. That, that is the degeneracy, yes. Uh, so you have the two energy levels mm -hmm. here and the population difference is created by, well, population difference is created by this transitions. <laughs> okay, but degeneracy is lifted. Degeneracy is lifted by B0. By B0. Degeneracy is lifted by B0. And the transition is caused by these fluctuating magnetic fields. Transition is caused by fluctuating magnetic fields. Okay, done. Yeah. This is for T1. Uh, now please explain T2 separately. Yes. So fluctuating magnetic fields also cause fluctuations in the z axis. Yeah. Okay. They cause fluctuations in the z axis. Hmm. If there is a change in the z axis, it adds to the B0 value. B0 plus minus delta B0. I call it delta B0. B0 plus minus delta B0. That means your precessional frequency has changed. 
So one spin sees one particular precession frequency, other spin sees another precession frequency, mm. and also in a time dependent manner. At one time it is going in one frequency, at next time it sees the same spin goes with another frequency. Mm. So there is fluctuation in the frequency. Because of that, there is a decoherence. The phase coherence which was there, they were all going together. Mm. If if take take this row, if this is going like this, one fellow is going like this. Initially they are going together. One fellow suddenly says, "Okay, I go forward." This remains the same. There is a decoherence. Oh, so in, this will keep changing. With respect to z axis. With respect to z axis. Okay. Because of the fluctuation in the z axis, mm -hmm. the field change is there. Therefore, the frequencies will change. Mm -hmm. That means the precessional frequencies of the space will change. Okay. And then that happens. There is a decay of the transverse magnetization. The phase coherence is lost. Whatever phase coherence you had created initially mm -hmm. by application of the RF. Application of the RF. Of yeah. RF had created the phase coherence, right? And then you have got a transverse magnetization by application of RF. Yeah. Now you remove the RF. RF is not there anymore. Yeah. Okay. And it is a system which is free. System is free. Yeah. But it has to return to equilibrium. Yeah. What are the equilibrium values? In what way it is returned to equilibrium? One is population recovers. That is the population recovery. Jet magnetization recovery. And the phase coherence also should not be there because at equilibrium there is no transverse magnetization, mm. there is no phase coherence among the springs, therefore that also has to decay. Mm. So therefore, in equilibrium, it has to return the equilibrium in all manners, which means both Z magnetization has to come back to its equilibrium value, and the transverse component also must go to zero. Clear? Mm. And yeah. And the fluctuating magnetic fields, yeah. Time scales of this two should be the because the frequency at which they are fluctuating yeah. are a constant value. So this no fluctuates like the frequency, all kinds of frequencies. So we will come to that. All, all frequencies, frequencies but frequency. they are same for both T1 and when they both for uh, causing transition in the Z uh, Z between this alpha and beta state. Yeah. And also the the spin D coherence. Yeah. Right, so spin the spin the the frequency of this fluctuation in z-axis, that, that is the same. Similar. That is the same. If the z field is changing with a particular frequency, so it is with the same frequency, the transfer power also will go. As yeah, yeah. Hello? Hello, the volume E2 is called spin spin relaxation, not spin relaxation. Yes. So, because it is not required for the phase coherence decay to happen for a transition. Transition is not required. Okay. For phase coherence to decay, you don't need a transition. Yeah. What you only need is a fluctuation in the energy level. So the average energy still remains the same. So there is no energy loss. Whereas in the T1 relaxation, there is an energy loss. Yeah. And then the required transitions are required there. Yeah. But does, then you may ask, is it that there is no transition happening in T2? No, transitions do happen, but there is a compensating reverse transition. If one transition happens here, the other transition happens simultaneously, therefore in the net, there is no transition required for T2 relaxation. We need a fluctuation in the energy level for it to cause a dephasing of the magnetization components. Okay? And therefore, this is also T2 is also what is called as the entropy effect, whereas the uh, T1 relaxation is an enthalpy effect. Because there is the energy change. Here there is no energy change. It is only a phase change. And phase change is the order change, so to say. When I say the springs are in phase, I say there is an order in the system. Some kind of a coherence order. Coherence order is present. And that the order is changing. Order is changing is entropy change. So you can use it in various languages. Okay? In thermodynamic terms or in, or, or in the individual spring system terms, you can use various languages. So, it's a loss of order. Phase coherence is gain of order. In the system, there is an order brought in, therefore it is negative entropy. And if there is a decay of this, there is entropy is changing. So, therefore, it is an entropy effect, not an energy effect. And therefore, you have to distinguish these two. And so, we distinguish it by calling it a spin spin relaxation, and the other one is spin lattice relaxation. There is no energy. Lattice involves a population change. 
Yeah. And it is also the memory. Sometimes you also call it as memory. Okay. Yeah. This is yeah. And in case of P1, uh -huh. when those uh, frequencies were fluctuating, uh -huh. okay, then uh -huh. some of the frequencies were matching with delta E, the uh -huh. transition frequency, and uh -huh. then the transition was uh, like taking place. Yeah. And the population difference was maintained. Yes. So who is then maintaining this biasness? Like some of uh, more population will be in alpha and uh, less will be in beta. I mean, I, I'm trying to say that uh, like not all the skills will go to beta. Of course. Some of them will go to beta yeah. and some of them will be in alpha. So yeah. who maintains this biasness? That's what is the both constant states. See, at a temperature, at a given temperature, you have an equilibrium population distribution which is determined by the statistics. Yeah, but, but uh, these transitions are occurring because of the fluctuations, uh -huh. which are random. Uh -huh. Then they can uh, be random. Na? Why, like. Uh, no, it reaches a steady state. Uh -huh. It reaches a steady state. At the steady state, the upward and the downward transitions are to be equal. Okay. Okay. And upward and the downward transitions numbers will be equal. Hmm. Okay, and it has to also satisfy the Boltzmann distribution. Okay. Also, this is more on this question. So then, how how does it bring a population change? Hmm. This comes because I said earlier, it's because of the lattice. The lattice also has a certain population distribution. Whatever energy is lost because of one transition is gained by the lattice. Okay. The, therefore, the population of the lattice also comes into the picture. Okay. That comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. Both T1 and T2 relaxations are brought about by the spatial interactions and the fluctuations in the space. Both are brought about by the same. Okay? But they have differences because with respect to the net effect. The net effect which happens in one case you are talking about the population changes, in the other case you are talking about the phase changes, phase coherence. Okay, let me just show you how the lattice plays a role here. So let's uh, you take consider the two two level system. This is your spin, and let us call this population as the M1, this population as the M2. And on the other side you have the lattice, this is the reservoir, this is your spin. So let's call this population as N A and this population as N B. See, so because these are quantum transitions, see so if if you lose an energy here, it has to be gained by the lattice, and if we need energy, it has to be given by the lattice. Okay. So therefore, both these populations will come into the picture. Suppose I say. See the number of downward transitions that is this here we are talking about number of downward transitions is proportional to proportional to the N1, the N B and transition probability 1B. To A. <clears throat> what is 1B to 2A? 1B to 2A is a transition probability under the condition that the initial state is in nucleus, your know, nucleus is in M1, and the initial state of the lattice is, is in B state. This is the population. Therefore, if this has to come down, this has to go up. Therefore, it is dependent on this population as well as on this population. And this is the transition probability for that. Similarly, the number of upper transitions will be, will be the other, other way.
will be proportional to n2 n a w 2a to 1b. Okay? So this is the reverse. For a what a what transition? What should be the condition? Initial state of the spring should be N2 and initial state of the lattice has to be N A. So both these populations come in. And these two transition probabilities are the intrinsic transition probabilities. These are caused by the RF, not RF, but it is the H1 field created by this. Those are intrinsically the same. Therefore, differences in the upward and the downward transition rates are proportional, therefore, to both these populations. Not only your own spin populations, but the latest populations as well. And that's why those two things are different. Okay? In the yeah. transverse plane, yeah. then uh, should the t2 value be 0? No, it will be infinite. Infinite. It will be infinite. It always remains the same. There is no decoherence. There is no loss of coherence. So, but uh, the line with animal line there uh, never. Uh, then in that case, if t2 is infinite, then the line will be infinite. There will be a line. It will be a single line, like a normal spectrum. So, in real case, that is never the that never situation. Happens. So there is always, it is never possible to have all the spin um, coherent at, in, at the time. Yes, yes. yes. Because, because of the fluctuating magnetic fields. The fluctuating magnetic fields will always create fluctuations on the z-axis. And therefore there is always a decoherence happening. And that, what, so what is, the, what is the rate of these motions will depend, determine how fast it should be decaying and things like that. Okay. Therefore, what let, let us summarize here across otherwise then I will have to then I will have to I will have to stop here. Uh, so, so what we have seen is to summarize we have seen how the block equations are uh, derived or solved and incidentally we saw the absorptive line shape these are the Lorentzian line shapes. We got Lorentzian absorptive and dispersive line shape. In reality, you may not find Lorentzian line shapes. Sometimes you will get deviations from Lorentzian line shapes, and you may get what are called as Gaussian line shapes. This also happens. And that is because of the hypothesis of Bloch. Bloch assumed that these are all first order processes. He wrote straight away that we have 1 minus P2 divided by P2, essentially assuming first order processes. But there will be higher order effects. So, because of that, okay, there can be some deviations from these Lorentzian line shapes, and then you may you will see that in in uh, real spectra. Typically, if you consider only two spins, then it's always uh, uh, it's a monotonously decreasing function. Yeah, so we do it, uh, and then we try to look at understand the relaxation phenomena in somewhat more detail. Although T1 and T2 are two different relaxation times which characterize different components of the magnetization, one along the z-axis, other one along the, the transverse plane, their origin is the same. Origin is the same. They all arise because of fluctuations in your solution. Right? Yeah. yeah. Although T1 relates to the, the longitudinal magnetization, T2 relates to the transverse magnetization. In the transverse magnetization has to do with the phase coherence between the things, and longitudinal magnetization has to do with the populations in the things. Both these relaxations are caused by the fluctuations in the magnetic fields and due to the motions inside your solution. What is the what is the rate at which this will happen will depend upon the, what is the strength of this or the transverse components and this how many are probability and. Under certain conditions, it turns out that the T1 and the T2 will be equal. By and large, they will be equal. Uh, especially when you are in uh, fast motion condition. That will be the right uh, next time. Fast motion conditions, the T1 and the T2s are equal. And if you go to slower motions, then of course the two things start working differently and the energy density will be higher. So, and then you will see the two things are different, the behaviors are different. And uh, 
the phase coherence is, is what is important in most of your uh, NMR structure. So the line width, line width is determined by that. Line width is determined by the phase coherence decay, phase coherence decay, and that is what shows up in your NMR spectral lines. So you want to get high resolution spectra, of course you want to have long T2s, uh, you don't want to have long T1s, long, <laughs> long T1s are not very good. So we should have short T1s so that the populations come back to equilibrium, but we want to have long T2s so that the signal lies, stays for longer, we can collect the data for longer period of time. It is that. So that is uh, the practical aspect of T1s and the T2s. Okay. So next time we will we will see the Fourier analysis of these fluctuating fields and how the frequency distribution is present in this and uh, what is the power in the in the fluctuating magnetic fields. Power power means when I say R F we have a power right V1 square H1 square is the power. So how much is the power in this fluctuating magnetic fields? that causes the relaxation, okay? So these efficiencies we will see next time.